The Fox Crooked is one of the most interesting frame designs in the past several years. And if you're thinking, isn't this just another box frame that we've seen for the past few years? That's what I thought as well until I saw Hypers at International Open. He was putting on some of the fastest times of the event and I stopped by to chat. I didn't even whip my camera out. That's how taken aback I was at how tiny the footprint of that frame was. It felt like holding a three and a half inch or four inch quad but it had five inch motors. How are they accomplishing that? This takes the basic design principle of a box frame, which is all vertical thin plates to get the least amount of area under the prop, reducing the overall drag, but it takes it a step further. Each of the four arms lies on a slightly different plane, allowing the props to literally overlap, shrinking the footprint, getting that turn radius as small as possible, giving you the smallest, lightest package that you can possibly Possibly get. And I first noticed this by simming on Velocidrone. One day I was looking at the Velocidrone leaderboards for the weekly Thursday night sim race on the FMV Discord. And I noticed that out of the top 50 times, like half of them were all on the Fox Crooked. Now, at first I would think, well, maybe these different quads are just skins, right? Maybe they all fly the same. They just look different. But that's not the case. On the Spill the Tea podcast, where we had Velocidrone developer Ash on, he actually said that Quads only make it onto Velocidrone when he gets them in person and he puts them through wind tunnel testing, black box log testing, and other testing to really make sure that the real life quad flies like the one in the sim. And why were all of the times on the Fox Crooked so high? So I started using the Fox Crooked on sim and guess what? I noticed a good one to one and a half second time savings on almost any track that I tried immediately the day I switched. So I just had to know how this thing was going to fly in person. So I went ahead and got it. I got it here and on the track, I noticed the same benefits. Because those vertical plates and the small footprint, this thing literally slices through the air. The way that swinging a samurai sword cuts through the air in a way that a baseball bat just doesn't. That feeling of a small size and footprint really makes it feel like you have the nimbleness of a three and a half inch to four inch, but with the power and momentum of a five inch. It's really startling the first time that you fly it, the amount of control that you have. Once I started getting some packs, it just felt so intuitive. It felt like everything was connected. It felt like the quad was an extension through my sticks of my own consciousness itself. But I got a little bit too excited. I sent it a little bit too hard and I just full sent that thing into a tree. Why? Because even though it felt like it was predicting it, I wasn't used to that adjustment in the amount of time needed. And I just got a little bit too confident. Well, I just sent the Fox Crooked as fast as I possibly could. You know, I've never really flown something that felt like it gave me a skill boost. There's flies good, there's flies good enough, there's flies exceptionally well. And I can always tell that the lighter frames, when you take off 50, 60 grams, they're always gonna fly better the Kronos, the 533 switchback, the Dendrones, the OZR I just flew. All of those at lighter weights and very stiff frame setups all fly way better than what I've normally been used to racing on. But this is the first craft that actually not just flew well, it made me feel like I had a skill boost because of the small footprint, because of the overlapping props, it had a super tight turn radius, because of the two mil carbon all the way around all of the carbon of the fox crooked is two millimeters thick i'm talking about these brace thingies the actual arms itself are two mils bottom and the top plate two mils everything on here is two millimeters and that seems a little bit ah, fragile it must be italian Hmm. Pushed a little too hard and I sent it straight into a tree. Let's do a post-mortem on this crash. It actually wasn't too bad. I ended up fully killing one arm, two of the spars, which are the brace type things, and one motor. This motor I think is dead because I just yanked the wire out all the way at the base and usually those are not fixable. I can probably salvage the bell. As you can see, all of the electronics are still intact and still work. I've pretty much tested them all. This was a hard crash, right? So I'm not surprised that something broke. This crash was hard enough. I actually knocked the LEDs off of this HD0 Whoop video transmitter right here 
here, but the thing still works. You just can't see the color light up. Even though this thing crashed, it did its job in protecting all of the electronics. This is only 10 or $14 worth of carbon, which is not a big deal at all. The trickier part is that this type of a repair on this craft would probably take me an hour because you're going to have to like redo several of the arms. A couple of these feet pieces actually broke, so I'm going to need to replace those as well. Maybe if you get used to this frame, you can do field repairs a little quicker, a little easier. For most of the frames, I could swap an arm and a brace or two in maybe five minutes in between racing rounds while you're waiting for your next heat. So do you want something all the way on the durable end of things like the open racer or do you want something all the way on the light most high performance things which is this or do you want something in the middle kind of like this ozr by dintrones but if you want all the way maximum performance this is the ticket there's a reason why a lot of these spars are sold out right now because people are finding out that secret sauce is my guess and they're probably breaking some of these too i mean two mil carbon is just not super thick now that crash would have folded just about any frame out there so i'm not too worried about that i had a big smash in fact a lot of smaller gate hits i was able to turtle mode and keep flying no big deal so it's not like it's paper mache but it is going to be less durable than something like the open Racer, but we already kind of know that's the case. As I went ahead sending this thing full send into that tree, I could almost hear Hyper next to me saying, I don't know, man. Sounds like a skill issue to me. Speaking of Hyper, he managed to get both TQs on the spring and summer global qualifier tracks using this frame, a track published where anyone in the world can fly it in order to get ranked against every other pilot in the entire world. He's number one using this craft. 170 millimeters, 40 grams, fits a full 30 by 30 Hobbywing 65 amp. It's practically unbendable. I flew it on both GQs. I'll be flying it at Champs. It's just been my favorite frame. It makes it feel like you can turn a little bit later and still get a perfect turn. You don't have to time everything as precise and it still does what you want it to do. It's like the margin of error just increased. It felt like shooting baskets on a rim the size of a hula hoop. Durability isn't what this thing is made for. Just like a Ferrari is not meant to be crashable. A Formula One car is not meant to be crashable. They're meant to extract every single ounce of performance around the track and subtract every fraction of a second out of that lap time that is possible. That's the goal here. I get this question a lot. What's the fastest? What's the fastest? What's the fastest? Usually the fastest is the lightest you can get with the most powerful components. This adds the dimension of not only having a lightweight, powerful components, but also a much reduced footprint and much reduced area under the prop, reducing the drag. In 2024, nothing flew around those tracks faster. Fox crooked from the Finn store over in Europe, but on the USA side, FPV Supply Co has this. They're also a really good source for gates and other practice materials. I really wanted to build this thing up using this signature build that's on Velocidrone with Hyper's special edition motors, but they were sold out. Not surprising because people are probably figuring out that this is like the meta or whatever the young kids say. If you want to see more notes from Hyper, including his complete global qualifier runs, go check out his channel. You can see both of those runs. I'll have links in the description below, as well as some notes if he comes out with them. I've never felt a physical upgrade. I I felt like a similar upgrade going from FR Sky to Crossfire because of the reduced latency. I felt a similar gain going to the HD0 90fps camera, but I've never felt one physically, and this was it. Skill issue. 